Okay, so now we gotta go to Bathing in Gratitude, Part 1. We're back again. All this coming and going is tiring me out a little. Aha! Way to catch, huh? Welcome home! You must be worn out from all that hard work. So why don't you take a nice relaxing bath? Eh? We can get together everything we'll need for the food preparation while you're soaking. Ooh! That's so thoughtful of you! Hot bath, here I come! <sighs> Phew! You finally got her to settle down a little. You're so good at this, Shuna. It's just like you're her mother or something. <laughs> oh, not at all. I simply understand how Lady Millum feels, that's all. <laughs> how she feels? She wants to repay you after you've been so kind to her for all this time. I feel the same way, you know? Uh. Hmm... Yeah... I guess I've never thought that deeply about Milam's situation, but... Uh. As far as I'm concerned, you and Milam have done so much for me that it's only natural for me to look out for you two. Arigato na. Thanks for everything, Shuna. Oh, great Rimaru. Yep, she's blushing. I just wonder, where is everyone else in this event? It's only been the three of them. I guess Rhaegar showed up in the very beginning, like the first three word boxes or whatever, when he told Rimaru that Shuna and Milam were looking for him. Yare, yare. The truth is... There's a lot that I should be thanking Milan for more often, too. Ah. But she's always flailing around like a hurricane, so it's hard for me to get a word in edgewise with all the chaos going on. Hmm. I'd like to express my thanks through my actions somehow, but... Hey, that's right. I could take a page out of Milan's book. No. Hey. You have to be pretty particular about the spices when you're cooking meat, right? Eto. That's right. If only we had some rare spices. I think it would give a really special flavor. Yes? In that case, I'm going foraging in the woods again. Desuga. Oh my! But you must be very tired too, Great Rimaru. Ooh. Please. Let me do this much. Right now, I feel just like Milam too. No. I want to be like her and do my best to pitch in today too. So please, tell me about those rare spices you mentioned. Great Rimaru, I understand. Eto. In that case, you'll have to go a bit deep in the mountains. But there's a certain herb that imparts a fairly hard-to-find flavor. Oh, and a kind of swamp moss that would be very helpful too. Moss? You can use moss in cooking? Yes, a moss with a wonderful fragrance grows there. It's perfect for offsetting the ranker flavors in meat. Huh, that's a word I've never heard. Ranker. I never would have guessed. All right, if I see any, I'll pick it and bring you some. Yes. Milam should be soaking in the tub for a while, so this is a good opportunity. Okay then, I'll be off. Hi. All right, please be careful. Phew, that bath felt amazing. Yeah, like, what? She's just instantly out? Like, what was that? A five-minute bath? Maybe even less? Like, she just dipped herself in the water and then got out. Like, she had to at least take a little bit of time to take off her clothes, jump in, and then, like, put back on her clothes. So that would be even less time if we were saying five minutes. 
But yeah, I think it's kind of boring to go into the bathtub by yourself. Like, every time we've seen people go take a bath in slime, it's usually they're going into the hot springs or sometimes baths regularly, all as a group. And so her just going by herself, she doesn't seem like the person to stay in the bath for a long time and enjoying it. It would feel nice, but she would get bored and be like, okay, I'm clean enough. Let's go see what Rimuru and Shun are doing. Ma. Huh? Um, Lady Millum, you finished your bath much quicker than usual today. Heh <laughs> <laughs> My reason for that is even deeper than the bathtubs in this town. Um, what do you mean by that? I would figured I'd give Rimuru a nice surprise and make some amazing New Year's cuisine before he even gets out of his bath. Huh? Oh dear. What should I do? The truth is, Great Rimuru just went to gather some spices for me. What? He ran off without telling me? I think he may have had the same idea you expressed just now. Huh? It seems he wanted to give you a surprise and bring back the herbs while you were still in your bath. You mean, we were thinking along the same lines? Well... You are besties, after all. Hehe, <laughs> <laughs> of course. We're kindred spirits, you know. <laughs> but I got out of my tub just a little too soon. Oh, that Rimaru. He'll regret this for sure. <laughs> yes, indeed. So why don't you just wait here for him to get back and... Huh... I was thinking I'd go chase him down and give him a scare. Should I not? Um, well, you might catch a chill going out right after your bath like that. I mean, is it possible for her to catch basic things like colds or the chills or anything like that? Allergies? Like, it seems the only way she can basically catch that is if it's like a, like, anime trope or, like, a joke gag, whatever. Where it's like, because Shuna said it, and then she instantly gets a cold. But aside from that, I'm pretty sure Milam's immune to basically everything that would be a normal disease or stuff for regular people. Since when do demon lords catch cold? Besides, I was really hoping you would teach me about demon lord cuisine. Hmm, oh yeah, I still haven't taught you about that. Hi. Please do. Let's see, demon lord cuisine is... Eh. Yes, what is it? Hang on, I'm still thinking. It'll come to me any second now. Um... Phew! This ought to keep her here for a while. Great Rimuru, please, hurry up and come back before it's too late. I have a bad feeling about this somehow. I better finish this errand as quick as I can. I like how somehow Rimuru knows something bad is going to happen. Even though it's like, it's established that these two have thought communication or that Rimuru can communicate with any of his subordinates. Like he could have literally asked Shuna being like, hey, tell me as soon as Milam gets out of the bathtub or like, tell me if any emergencies are happening. And this would be one of the most useful situations for that. I got the herbs, and this plant that's kind of like wasabi. So now I just need the swamp moss. 
There's not much that smells nice around here, though. Is it really okay to eat something gathered from a place like this? Ugh, it's so slimy and slippery all over. Can you really eat this stuff? I mean, that's what he should be asking the people whenever they be eating his slime brethren. Or if they start thinking about wanting to eat him. Huh? Hang on. Sniff, sniff. Oh, so that's what she was talking about. For being such a swampy place, it really doesn't smell that bad here. Is it because of that moss? I guess it works like a perfume in its own way. Sorry, moss. I'm just gonna take a bit of you. Why is he talking to the moss? It's like he's talking to the creature more than anything. Like he's like, oh, sorry, I'm just gonna need to borrow a leg or borrow a piece of you. But yeah, talking to the moss is weird. Since it's not alive, or at least not alive, in the same way that most creatures are. Yep. Let's see. Battle of the Century, Part 1. So hopefully more characters are going to be in this part. Maybe. I'm back for real this time! Huh? Milam? You're already out of the bath? I mean, like, how long was he even gone? I would imagine he was at least gone for a while. To search for the moss and the other herbs. So, I mean, considering, like, Milam was only in the bath for, like, five minutes and then he's probably gone for... Let's just give him a good 30 minutes. I think it's probably a reasonable time that she should have gotten out. Maybe if he was gone, like, super quickly using his Demon Lord speed to just take care of that monster and get there. Then I would say that... Probably give him a good, like, 15 minutes. Hmm... What is Demon Lord Cuisine anyway? Huh? What are you racking your brains about? I was sure she'd pitch a fit and start yelling. Why didn't you take me with you? Welcome home, Great Rimuru. Um, I tried asking Lady Milam about Demon Lord Cuisine, but she's been lost in thought ever since. Aha. Uh -huh. So she's trying to think of a cuisine that doesn't exist. That's what got her rooted to the spot. We'll handle, Chuna. Ooh. Hey, Milam. I'm home now. I gathered some fragrant moss so you can use it to make the food, right? Nani? Oh, Rimuru. When did you get back? Ah. I've been here for a while. Anyway, let's get started on the food prep. If you get going, Maybe you'll remember something. Hey, good point. Ahem, Shuna, you learn best by doing when it comes to cooking. Now, where are those magical beasts we just caught? Hi. All right. I washed them nice and clean. Since we'll be cooking them, let's... Doda. Great. Once we pounded them into mincemeat, our Demon Lord Cuisine will be complete. Does Demon Lord Cuisine just mean making everything into hamburger meat? Hmm. I think she wants to make them more into fish paste than hamburger meat. But I just wonder what does that entail? Like making fish into hamburger meat or I guess making lizard hamburger meat? This feast will be eaten by the children of the town as well, so I would prefer to remove the shells and bones and so on first. Yeah, uh, I would not want to eat a hamburger or whatever they're trying to make and like eating some scales or biting into some bone. Ugh. I'm pretty sure I have eaten some chicken nuggets or burgers where there have been little bits of bone and god damn that that ruined my mood 
because first of all, that that hit my tooth, and second of all, I'm disgusted. Like trying to eat something like that. Oh yeah, the little squirts are gonna eat it too, huh? Well, in that case, I guess it's better if the hard parts get cut off, huh? Maybe you should let Shuna cut it up for you, don't you think? Well, it won't really be my own cooking if I do it, will it? Hey, where's Hikaru? Yeah, she has a point here. Like, I mean, if Shuna does everything, that's not really her cooking at that point. Like, if someone is basically directing what is to be made, is it their cooking? I would say it's probably their food, but not their cooking. Huh. He's training just outside of town. I think. Why? <laughs> I've never forgotten the way that guy sliced up the Megalodon with his katana. <laughs> I want him to show me his swordsmanship one more time. If I can just see it twice. It ought to be a snap to imitate it myself. I mean, he probably did it more during the battle with Carabas. Like, I can't imagine that was the only Megalodon he sliced up. So, was she not paying attention during that battle? Like, to him, I guess she was probably checking everyone out. But I don't think it would be that hard for her to watch the entire battlefield. With her Milam eye. If anybody could pull it off, it'd be her for sure, but. Gasp! Wheeze! I'm gonna die before this year even ends. Yep, finally we get to see more characters. Also, I love it how it's every single event we see these two always training. And Gawata always going to die. Huh. I'd like to tell you that your training is done for now. But this is simply pitiful. Yo. Whoa, you're really going at it. What is it, you two? Damn, your, your master and the demon lord that you kind of respect is coming up to you to try and talk. And you say, what is it, you two? Like, I thought he would have been more respectful than that, being like, Yes, what can we do for you, Master Rimuru and Lady Milam? Ah. Uh, that's... No, no. Come at me, Hakaru. Cut me down with a single strike. <laughs> what a weird way to put it, Milam. Instead of just saying, hey, show me your technique, or... I want to see how you cut stuff with your katana. She's like, please slay me. Hmm. What on earth is she going on about now? I kind of like how he's pretty frank with it. And just being like, why is Milam talking crazy? <laughs> it's hard to explain. Look, could you just do what she wants, please? Mm. Oh ho, playing around again, are we? Hmm, to cut you down, though, could the blade of an old geezer like me even touch you, Lady Milam? No need to go easy on me. Come at me like you're really gonna kill me. Hmm. Like, I mean it, is what you're saying. Well, your reasons can wait. I expect I needn't worry if you're my opponent. Hmm? But I must say, it rankles me somewhat that you think of my swordsmanship as something you can face so fearlessly. Therefore, as you wish, I shall fight you with all my might. This is gonna be the battle of the century! Oh, you're awake. You're pretty tough yourself, aren't you? I swear, Rimuru has said this comment like five or six times to Gabata. Like, after every single training during one of these events. You're right, though. Milam versus Hikaru, huh? I faced off with them both 
But this battle, just watching it is going to be educational. There's no way even that old man can stand up to Lady Millum. <coughs> She's gonna find weak spots in my master that I've never even imagined. For sure. I can't take my eyes off this battle. Whoa, whoa. Let's start with a little warm-up test. Crest Water Slash! Oh! Neither of them are moving, aren't they? Yeah. Can't you see? Huh? Uh, <laughs> that's actually funny if it's doing what I think it's doing. They're moving at such high speeds that Gabuta can't keep up. So it looks like they're not moving to him, but to Rimuru, also a demon lord, like he's way above Hakaru's like power level. But I mean, in terms of speed, he's Hakaru's probably up there with Rimuru, and at least speed wise, like lower, but in that range. While Milam like is able to probably easily keep up with Hakaru, but still going at like somewhat of a high level of speed. Uso. What? I missed that. Eh? <laughs> you saw it, didn't you? I dodged. Hmm. So it would seem. Did you see the weak point, Gabata? No way. That's impossible. <laughs> I mean, like, just dodging it is not really a weak point. It's like if Milan was to go more on the offensive, but I'm pretty sure the entire objective of this is just to see his slashes. So she'll be on the defensive just avoiding. These old eyes of mine have a hard time following your movements, but I too have something to learn from my bout with the oldest demon lord. Oh ho, well said. Alright then, I'll show you some moves of my own. Aren't you going to stop them, Great Rimuru? At this rate, my master will. We're well outside the town, so it should be fine. You're underestimating both of them, Gabata. Man, like, I wish Rimuru was this casual a lot of the time. Even when they are far outside the city. It's like, usually the city is going to expand to this area. And he's like, no, we can't be destroying all this area. We need it all for construction or, you know, fields or whatever. And plus, like, he usually never wants them to hurt each other. So to hear him say it's like Gabata's underestimating them and that they can actually take, like, some danger or, like, some hits. That's actually, like, kind of cool to see. Huh? Both of them? Milam has enough skill to determine her opponent's strength level and just go easy on him, as necessary. Uh. I think. <laughs> she is not even confident in that. Uso. You think? Yeah, literally all the time they try and utilize Milam, she's like, I'll destroy those guys or do whatever, and then Rimuru has to say, hey, let's go gently on those guys, or let's not take it overboard. Anyway, Hakaru is... I'm only gonna do this once, so get a good look. You hear me? Drago Buster! Like, literally, that's one of her finishing moves. And she's trying to use it on this old man who has nothing but swordsmanship. Yeah! Master! Oh no! He can't really be dead, can he? Also, I like how the sound effect was still going on <laughs> while Gabata was saying that. It's like Gabata knew what was happening and said it in a dramatic way. It's like, Master! No! And then, boom! Hakaru's gone. 
I told you, you're underestimating them, especially Hakaru. What? What? Hikaru has his own dodging techniques, you know? If he didn't, Milim would never have taken things this far. Yep, so she's got some respect for the old man. <laughs> Great Rimuru and Lady Milim, you both give me far too much credit. Indeed, I was able to sidestep, but if I had frozen up for even the smallest bit, or reacted even slightly too late, I would have been overcome. <sighs> to have my mettle tested in such a way at my age. Why, if you'd struck at full force, this forest would have been cleared away. <sighs> I'm surrounded by crazy people. <laughs> I'm good at adapting my strength to my opponent, you know. Anyway, I wanted to see more of that skill so I could use it for cooking. Hmm? For cooking? Ah. Yeah, remember when you sliced up the Megalodon? She said she wanted to watch that kind of technique. Yeah, yeah. So, you wish to take a rod to this worn out old back of mine again, eh? You two are much crazier than I am. Oh ho ho. I am so weirded out by this sentence. You wish to take a rod to this worn out old back of mine. Like, I don't understand what does that mean? Like, it's very confusing to me. But I guess that basically means like they're using this guy that's a battle hardened veteran sword master for cooking. Like, they're using him very unintended of, like, the ways he's supposed to be used. Like, damn, and that was a whole battle in itself in that cutscene. I was expecting that to be, like, super quick, but that was a lot longer than I expected. Yeah, if, like... It would have been amazing to actually see that animated. And plus, that probably would have been one of those crunchy roll clips where it's like, Hikaru versus Milam, Battle of the Century. And then the fight would have been like two minutes. Since they always like to clip those for like One Piece, Naruto, or any of the big animes. Alright, so I think it's Root Vegetables Galore, Part 1. I see, I didn't even manage to graze you, after all. How disappointing. But at least it's surely given you a good look at my swordsmanship. <laughs> yeah, I think I pretty much got the knack of it. I'm gonna go get back to cooking. <sighs> she has way too much energy. Right after a battle like that? Sorry about the trouble, Hakaru. Hmm? Not at all. It was quite an unusual experience. Now then, Gobita. Yeah, after he had a battle like that, he's ready to train back with Gobita. She, so she's not the only one with a lot of energy. So is he. Huh? huh? <laughs> I may be an old man who just had a narrow brush with death, but surely I have enough strength left to take my impudent student to task, eh? Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm sorry! Yeah, Gabata was way too excited to see Hakaru have like some weak points that he can exploit in later training. But now that there's none, he's like, Whoa, no, I'm sorry! Eek! He managed to overhear a whisper from an onlooker while holding off an attack like that. That's Hikaru for you. Oh yeah, so means he was able to listen in like while he was having the death battle. 
about Gabuto's thing. I mean, technically, it was before the first attack, so he kind of, like, was able to hear it with no trouble, I would think. Unless he was focusing mostly on Milam, but able to put, like, 2% of focus on Gabuto to hear that before the battle. Set my wrist like so, draw it back, and... Gulp. Yes. Whoa! <laughs> I cut it pretty cleanly, didn't I? I'm just wondering, like, can't Milam use her, like, copy abilities to probably just copy anything? So can't she just watch, like, Shuna cook, like, once, or at least cook a bunch of meals? And then be able to learn how to do those meals basically like that. Like that would seem like a much better way than her like trying to go step by step. Excellent work, Lee Millum. <laughs> so, what should I do next? <laughs> well, we'll use the bones for the bra, so... <laughs> At some point... Shuna ended up being the one teaching her. When it comes to our ogres, I don't know if they're more trustworthy or terrifying. Next, could you cut away the sinews and so on from the meat and discard them for me? Huh? Those bits aren't really so tough that you couldn't eat them, are they? I mean, I guess for a demon lord, she can probably eat anything. I think she could probably eat rocks and just make them go down easily. Hi. It makes the meat easier to eat. It helps it cook more evenly as well. <laughs> I see. This cooking stuff is more fiddly than I thought. But I wonder, is it a different flavor if they do add that other stuff? Like, it could be a different dish entirely. I'm getting kind of worried about what passes for cooking where she comes from. Okay, then. I'll rip off all the sinews and stuff. Rip them out? What? Barehanded? Is that bad? Lady Millum. If you were to use a kitchen knife to remove the sinews, you would be able to do it without soiling your hands, wouldn't you? If my hands get dirty, I can always wash them. Your garments might also be soiled, you know. I'll do it with a kitchen knife then. Seems like she really does love that festival finery of hers. And Shuna can talk a demon lord around. She really is scarily good at this. <laughs> Alright then. I'll get it all cut up in an instant. Don't brandish that kitchen knife around like that. Are you trying to chop up the cutting board too? Yeah, I mean, all it would take is slightly a bit too much strength. And then boom, she destroys... The cutting board, and she destroys the table with a knife. <laughs> Lady Millum, use your left hand to lightly hold the meat in place and carve your fingers. Yes, like that. Now slice close to your fingers. Alright, so she's guiding her like every step of the way to make sure she doesn't do anything wrong. Is she holding her fingers hostage or something? Okay, I'm I'm super confused. Who's holding whose fingers hostage? Is it Shuna holding Milam's fingers hostage? Use your left hand to lightly hold the meat in place. And curve your fingers. Yes, like that. Now slice. Close to your fingers. Yeah, I'm kind of confused. Hmm... Easy does it. Hey, I cut it. 
Yeah, I'm guessing if like her fingers weren't on the meat at all, she'd be able to cut like a lot of pieces real quickly. But there would probably also be a chance she would slice through the like table or counter. Well done, Lady Milam. Wow, she's helping her pick up the basics of cooking like a natural. At this rate, they might actually get the cooking done peacefully. <laughs> Great, Rimaru. Huh? Gabata, what's wrong? Bah! What's that giant root for? Oh ho! Lady Milam, Lady Shuna. I was out for a walk with my student when we found the most auspicious ingredient for a vegetable side dish. What? He made me pull out this giant root all by myself. He really is the toughest coach. <laughs> Naturally, I am an ogre after all. Yeah. Hang on, what are we supposed to do with this lily bulb that big? Lily bulb? So that's what they call this root? Or did they just make this up for the game? Like, it would be interesting if that is an actual vegetable in slime lore or the world. Oh, is that what this vegetable is called? A lily bulb? Yeah, this particular species is called a goblin lily. But that's more like a giant org lily. I am an ogre, after all. Oh, in that case, we can make a wonderful dish, Lady Milam. What's that? <laughs> Since this bulb comes from a lily, we can cut it into the shape of a flower. With such a big bulb, we could cut a whole field of blossoms. Huh? You're going to cut it into a decorative shape before you cook it? Milam, can you do that? <laughs> hey, are you selling me short? Rah. <laughs> My, what swordsmanship? <gasps> She's handling the kitchen knife with such precision. <laughs> She's cutting it into perfect flower shapes. It's a field of lily bulb flowers. I put those knife handling skills that Hikaru and Shuna taught me to good use. <laughs> and I mastered them completely, cause that's just how I am. <laughs> They're all cut exactly in the same shape. She's like a 3D printer or something. <laughs> Notice, similar cut pieces could be produced using the materials stored in your body. Take this action? Where'd that come from all of a sudden? We don't need any more. Do we? <sighs> Wait, is Raphael feeling competitive? Negative. Approaching magical beast detected. The springtime smell of root vegetable has awakened them from their winter hibernation. Are you serious? But it's still winter! These magical beasts are seeking flower nectar. Mass production of additional artificial flower decoys recommended. You really are just feeling competitive, aren't you? Negative. Alright, that one happened pretty quick while... The battle of the century was taking quite a while. Sneaking a bite, part one. With Shuna's support, our New Year's cuisine so far includes fish paste, fancy mashed chestnuts, flower shaped lily bulbs, and... Oh, it all looks so good. Please wait until New Year's to eat it, alright? 
Ugh. The giant roast for the main dish is all ready. You can tell from the aroma that it's cooked to perfection. Plus, Millen worked so hard on all of this. It makes me really happy that Milam put so much love into doing such a nice thing for me. Not as a demon lord, but as a friend. Like damn, this is super sentimental. There's no mistaking it. I think our connection has really grown stronger than ever. And not just with Milam either. Thanks to all of you, we made it safely through the year, without a dull moment. It's all thanks to the faith that we have in each other. The calendar year will be changing soon, but the strong bonds we forge will never change. This feast is meant to celebrate that, so... <laughs> bring on the new year, and let's keep on partying until it gets here, together! Yeah! Drool. There's so much to choose from. I can't decide what to eat first. If you can't decide, how about starting with some traditional New Year's soba noodles? Huh? They just look like regular noodles. But, it only seems that way, huh? These have some kind of special meaning too, don't they? Ooh. I knew you'd figure it out. Naruhodo. Noodles with a special meaning, eh? I've been partaking in them as well, but I never knew they were meaningful. They have a very simple flavor compared to all these other dishes, don't they? Hmm. Are they meant to be some sort of lucky charm, like the rest of the New Year's cuisines? Ooh. You got it! Look, the noodles are super long, right? And they got plenty of body, too. Someone, uh. They symbolize being strong and hearty, and stubbornly persisting, long into the years to come. That's why we eat them at New Year's. Oi. Indeed. It is our dream Tempest will continue steadily grow and flourish long after the first flush of prosperity, is it not? Mm -hmm. Is there a special meaning to these different toppings as well? Meat, mixed tempura, fried tofu. I myself would like some meat. Uh... Oh yeah, come to think of it, there's a meaning to the green onions and shrimp too. Anyway, they're all lucky, so eat whatever you like. <laughs> I loaded mine up with every kind of topping. Wow, you can't even see the noodles underneath. Yes? How are you going to tell if it gets soggy? I'm gonna top mine Kitsuna style. No. Huh? What's that? I thought they were mere fried tofu, but... Kitsuna? It can't be. You're eating a fox spirit. Eta. Oh no, it's just called Kitsuna style. That's all. Relax. It's just sweet fried tofu. Phew. I was quite enjoying the sweet flavor, so I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> slurp. Urk. Cough, cough. Hawk. Slurp. Why is he, like, throwing up his stuff that he's eating? Is he, like, throwing up the noodles, something else? Or, like, is he injured or something? And that's why he keeps coughing. Uh. Ah, he's the type who chokes on his noodles. Come to think of it, it must be really hard to slurp them with a mouth shaped like his. Huh. I'm trying to think how noodles and stuff work. Actually, I do kind of see that, because don't you usually have to make your mouth into like an O shape? Considering he's got like a beak slash 
snout situation going on where he like can't even like shape up his face. Can he? God, I'm trying to think about how characters shape their faces. And I think he can, but... Yeah, I'm just super confused. I don't know. Gulp. Ah. There's nothing like a nice hot bowl of broth. Whoa. That was fast. Don't forget to chew your food properly. Wait. It's fine to eat soba noodles without chewing much, isn't it? Sorry. That was thoughtless of me. Go ahead and eat the way you like. Hmm. If I can eat whatever I like, then how about that stuff? That stuff? No, never mind. It's not the time for that stuff yet. Oh, I see. I'm gonna hold off on New Year's cuisine until New Year's. No. Milam? Aw, why, why did it get all somber all of a sudden? Also, really wonder what she was pointing at. Like, is it the main course? Or is it something else? Huh? Huh? Do ya? I'm gonna tell you a secret. You know what's the best part about making New Year's cuisine is? Sneaking bites before New Year's. Nani? Sneaking bites? Are you sure? Won't you get mad? Doda? You're the one who cooked it, after all. So you got chef's privileges. Plus, I haven't gotten to sample it yet, either. Right? Soda na. Chuna, I'm sorry, but... Oh, I've already got everything ready. I put out a nice sampling of everything in little dishes for you. See? That's our Shuna. <laughs> Hooray! Time to chow down. Yes? Don't mind if I do. So what's gonna stop this heartwarming moment? Is it gonna be the magical beast? Is it gonna be... Probably Xion. I'm surprised we haven't seen her at all during this event. Like, you would think she would be one of the main people taking part in this, considering it's New Year's meal. Like, people would have to stop her from cooking, or she would be secretly doing it and be like, Surprise, Rimaru! I made you a New Year's cuisine. Wow, this is... Also, what was that sound effect they used? Like, was it millimeting? Was it someone else? It's super delicious! Who made this stuff? Ah. You did, of course. <laughs> hey, you're right. Of course it's delicious. If I made it myself. But it's so delicious. I can hardly believe I made it. <laughs> what a model reaction. Still, it really is good. You're amazing, Milam. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt your meal, great Rimaru. What's nearly time for? Huh? Huh? What's this? The meat we're supposed to eat has come back to life. Great Rimaru, are you livening up the feast with an illusion? Of course not. Maybe it's here for revenge. Hey, don't eat that. Wasn't it a friend of yours? Why would you eat it? Oh my god. <laughs> Let's see. So much is going on right now. What's this? The meat we're supposed to eat has come back to life. Great Rimuru. First, how does he get that, like, wrong? Like, you would have to see the face of the creature of the meat. Like, trying to, like, move around or eat people. To say it's come back to life. I'm guessing he was looking at the meat and then he was looking at the creature and then he was looking back at the meat and then looking back at the creature being like what the spear of the creature has come back or it's come back to life somehow reincarnated in a different body. 
while of course Rimuru is seeing like the creature and being like no that is not it it must be the friends come back for revenge but no they actually come here to eat his friend I'm guessing uh whatever creature they cook don't really care about cannibalism especially if their friend is cooked pretty good but yeah of course not maybe it's here for it hey don't eat that wasn't that a friend of yours yeah, that's funny. I should have known this would happen. With so much fragrant smoke around. Aha! That's a hell of an uninvited guest. I'll make it into a New Year's cuisine too! No, I think chasing it away would be enough. Huh. Don't we need as much food for this feast as we can get? We don't have time to make more food right now. Anyway, I don't want to kick up dust on the rest of the food you worked so hard to make. <laughs> dust? On my Demon Lord cuisine? No way! I refuse to let that happen. Okay, so that actually gets her motivated to get rid of the creature instead of trying to cook it. Pizza? Right! So let's try and chase it away using as little force as possible, without kicking up a fuss. Alright, and now we have Happy New Year. I'll make you into New Year's cuisine next year, so come back then, okay? Imagine telling someone, I'll kill you next year, so come back. Yeah, it's like, no one would ever want to come back to a place like that. But these creatures probably aren't smart enough to know that. If you tell it that, it'll never come back again. Everyone watched the battle without panicking, as if it was a show. It just demonstrates how safe and secure your strength makes us feel. I'm just glad we took care of it without spoiling the mood. Thank goodness for small mercies. For small mercies? Hmm. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing that it's like it was only a small, like, magical beast or only a few. <laughs> hey, maybe next year we can kill it and prepare it right in front of everyone. I've become a perfect master of the kitchen knife, you know? If it knew it would be the centerpiece of a public butchering demonstration, it'd definitely never come back. Like, damn. I swear, <laughs> the way Rimuru keeps saying it is like he keeps making it worse and worse. First, it's bad enough that it's gonna get cooked. The second phase of it, instead of it just being cooked, it's going to be put on as a show in front of everyone. The creature being taken piece at a time, slowly being cooked in front of everyone. Yeah, like, damn. They're making it worse. I wonder if he's going to do third time's a charm of saying, like, what's going to happen to it. Ahem. Pardon me. Let me try that again. Great Rimaru, please lead us in ringing in the new year. Ooh. Oh, right, right. Yes. Sorry about all that uproar in the middle of the feast. All right, let's get this party back on track. It's time for the countdown. Yeah! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year's! I feel like there's gonna be a joke at the end. 
Like, Milim's gonna want to do her Drago Buster as a firework or something. Yahoo! They're so colorful! Shapes ridden in flames. I see. I'll have to try out a firework version of my Hell Flare next year. I mean, this year. <laughs> when my enemies come tumbling back down from the sky, I can just go, bang, like this, and... Sounds like they'd be pretty disgusting fireworks. Yeah, what does he even mean by, like, making a firework version of his hell flare or hell flame like it'd be interesting to see like them make words in the sky but like isn't it an attack yeah i'm kind of confused by what he means by doing that <laughs> the new year's just gotten started and you're already talking dangerous stuff like that <laughs> true forgive me I suppose it's my nature as an Oni. Oh, so pretty. They're so bright, even though it's night. Ah. Yeah, that's the idea. Na -na. Rimaru, Rimaru. What do you call this art? Huh? It's not that big of a deal. It's just some detonating gunpowder. They're called fireworks. Anyway, Milam, I want to wish you a happy new- Wah! I had to change my clothes, and it made me run late. <laughs> oh, Shuna, you didn't have to hurry like that. Yeah? Yes, I do. I won't let anyone else be the first to wish you a happy new year, Great Rimaru. Is saying a happy new year to somebody really that important? It's just a greeting, isn't it? Hi. Paying your respects is the very first ritual of a new year. <laughs> you put on your special festival finery and give Great Rimuru his new year's greetings. That's called paying your respects. Also, this is the first time we've heard Shion talk this entire event. I am surprised it took this long. I was expecting at least some time earlier, not the very last cutscene of like the original event. Is that so? Mm. No, normally you pay your respects by visiting a shrine, not a uh, me. Now then, Great Rimuru, Happy New- Hey, that's not fair. You can't cut in line ahead of me right after I explained it. <laughs> hey, if anyone gets to go first, it ought to be me. Oh, special and auspicious Rimuru, greet me first. I'm not the one acting special here. <laughs> Great Rimuru. The dawn is not yet upon us, but I will represent the first rising of the sun with these mighty biceps. Like, damn. <laughs> That's funny that he brags about his biceps. I know he likes to do the poses, but this is the first time I think I heard him talk about his, like, physique and muscles. Oh, well. We better get this paying your respects thing taken care of too Ooh. yes sir great Rimaru I guess everyone's gonna pay their respects all at the exact same time instead of somebody actually going first <laughs> ah ah quit shoving everybody Arg. It's getting as crowded as a real shrine on New Year's. Shuna, please. Could you act as a shrine maiden and just lead everyone in one big greeting all together? Very well. All right. Everyone, all together now. Ready, set, go. 
Happy New Year! Great Rimaru! Let's have another great year together! Let's make it a good one! Happy New Year! Yeah, I hope we'll all get along great! Come now! Everybody, the feast is just getting started! We still got three more days of partying ahead of us. Okay, so it's three days of partying. So what is it? December 28th? I'm guessing. And so December 28th? Or no, it's December 29th, I'm guessing. And so they go up to December 30th? And then 31st, and then they go into the New Year's. Right? I think it's 31st and not 30 days of Christmas, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah! I just meant to teach them about the New Year celebrations in my past life, but I never had such a good time ringing in the New Year. I mean, I admittedly left out the annoying stuff like holiday cards and visiting relatives, but still, I'm so much happier here now. I would kind of feel sad leaving out those parts. Like I would think holiday cards and visiting relatives would make you happy. But we don't know much about Rimaru's, like, past life, aside that he lived alone as a businessman. So, we know he had no girlfriend, no wife, no children, or any of that. But he never talks about his parents. I really want to know, did his parents die, like, tragically when he was young? Was he an orphan? There's so much I want to know about Rimaru before. Being here with my friends who risked their lives and overcame danger with me makes me feel like this year is going to be a great one. If anything, they taught me about the true value of celebrating the new year together. Let's really make this year a good one together, everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's have a contest to see how far we can throw our shrine offerings. Weird? Like, are they throwing it at a, like, bin or basket where you're supposed to do the shrine offerings? Or are they, like, throwing it at Rimaru? Where are they offering? Uh -huh. I won't lose. Eto. Um, never mind your throwing range. Should we really be throwing things at Great Rimuru? Yeah, see, I kind of guessed that. I'm like, where are they throwing these offerings? Yeah! Absolutely not. Imagine him being pelted by the coins as offerings. Like, damn, that hurt. Especially by Milam. Probably would send him through a few buildings, just giving him a few cents. All right, well, that was the very last one for the main event, but there's still the last cutscene. Ingredient hunting. Huh? You want more New Year's cuisine? You just had some the other day. Okay, so this is after the, like, feast. I guess the very next day. So it's still, like, what? the 30th i guess that's the closest day i can think of but new year's isn't completely over yet <laughs> thinking about the last time made me hungry for more and this time i was thinking we could eat a different dish from before uh. so we're going hunting for ingredients again in our festival finery and you even got gabata in on this <laughs> I'll help out all day if it means that I can eat more delicious New Year cuisine. 
okay. And so here's Gabata's New Year's outfit from that year. Where I'm pretty sure he's the... Is it the Dire Wolf Rider or something? All, all I know is his name's like Rider something. But yeah, I really do like this outfit. I do like how he has armor on it. The fur all around him. It makes it look more like a winter uniform, but he's also a battle-ready soldier. The bandana is also pretty cool because, honestly, I don't like looking at the goblin's mostly bald head. So him mostly covering it up is pretty cool. And yeah, his pants also have fur as well. And he has gloves and everything. Yep, a really great look for him. I really hope they give him another new outfit soonish. <laughs> I figured Gabata would be the perfect goblin for the job. If it is left up to me, I could end up turning the ingredients into dust. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not a compliment, right? Basically saying you're super weak and so I need a weaker person to gather these ingredients for me. That's what she's saying. <laughs> anyway, helping Lady Millum gets me out of training. Collecting ingredients for New Year cuisine is a breeze compared to that. Ora, ora. Okay, Lady Millum, just tell me what to get. Should I bring back a bull deer or maybe some night spiders? Yahoo! With great Rimaru's help, we can get as much meat as you want. Don't tell me you're thinking of slacking off on this, too. <laughs> what do you mean? I can take down any monsters around here all by myself. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Today, you'll be hunting that. <laughs> oh my god, it's actually pretty huge. And both of them are kind of scared of it, or at least surprised by it, that they both, like, stood back. Dude. I said, you're hunting that. Uh, uh, it's huge. Wait, you don't mean you're going to eat that thing, do you? It's more fun to try something you've never tasted before, right? Plus, I'll bet Shuna can make a real tasty meal out of it. Yes! It looks so big and strong. I mean, disgusting. Great Rimuru, you think we should hunt for something different too, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just another variant, isn't it? Besides, can't you take any monster down all by yourself? Make sure you don't damage any of the good parts. So no critical hits on it. No, like, bashing in its head or, you know, aiming for the stomach. Any ways to, like, instantly kill it. And now you're asking for the impossible! If you don't think you're strong enough, Maybe you should get some extra support from Hakaru. Yeah! And that's just plain unreasonable! <laughs> if I knew it turned out like this, I would have just done my training instead. I really wonder what was the creature? If it was like the centipede, the lizard, uh, maybe a wolf, a megalodon? Or probably Carabus again. It was likely Carabus. <laughs> it's usually always Carabus. So yeah, that, that was a good try for the first time of doing like a New Year's event. And I quite enjoyed it. We'll see what other New Year's events they come up with in the future. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Slime Isekai Memories. Demon Lord New Year's Meal. If you guys did, 
please make sure to follow me on all my social medias, like my Twitter, my Twitch, my YouTube, my DLive, my TikTok, my Kick Rumble Odyssey in Daily Motion. Make sure to check out my second YouTube channel, and like and comment on all my videos, and even join my Discord. There you can stay up to date with everything I choose to, where my streams, videos, or anything else. But yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.